The top four sides in Ireland, Dundalk, Shamrock Rovers, Bohemians and Derry City have all been asked to pay 100k from their European prize money to contribute it towards a League of Ireland fund for restarting the campaign. Sorry, what? What's going on guys and welcome back to League of Ireland TV. Now today, this is doing kind of an update news type video. I'm not sure if I've done something like this in the past, I definitely have, but I was trying to find it there a while ago and I couldn't actually see a previous kind of like LOI news video, but I definitely have done something similar in the past. But um, just gonna be looking to update you guys on a few things today. And um, basically, uh, as I said in the intro there, the four League of Ireland sides that are gonna be taking part in European competitions have been asked to, uh, to fund um, this 1.7 million um, thing that their FAI are trying to put together to go towards a uh, kickstart in the league campaign. The clubs, to be fair to them, are apparently considering the request, but it's crazy, absolutely crazy, that they have been put in this position. Shane Ross, the Minister for Sports, said last night in a statement that the current board of the FAI and the changing regime there is very supportive and very sympathetic towards the League of Ireland, uh, much more than the last regime was. Although it doesn't have the resources to do what it would like to do, it certainly has political support. I found that interesting because, listen, it is a really difficult position for Nal Quinn, the likes who have kind of come into the FAI now and are actually genuinely trying to do the right things. It's such a difficult time for them uh, to be trying to put in place, especially with the coronavirus, it's such a tough thing to tackle straight off the bat. But we were given money, I think it was, we were given money a few years back from UEFA and it was just all pissed down the drain by John Delaney. And how is he not facing criminal charges? It's absolutely insane. The guy is an absolute cowboy and honestly, it's disgusting what he got away with for so long. Like the more you think about it the worse it gets like and he's just it's just such a horrible horrible situation for uh, the current regime to be to be dealing with there is a lot of the old uh, regime kind of still in there right now that's a problem that we are going to try and ha have to kind of slowly get these um donkeys out of this out of power and out of this, these positions because honestly it is killing the game so many clubs are in horrific positions at the moment so many players are in horrific positions at the moment they've families to feed and stuff like that so it's just such a difficult time for all involved and yeah it's just how is somebody not going to jail over this moving on to a bit more of a feel-good story and um, bohemians of course are a club that seem to be doing everything right at the moment and um, they of course actually at the start of this whole pandemic said that they were going to keep paying their players which is brilliant of course and shows that their hard work off the pitch um, it's really really paying off they of course hit the headlines with their away jersey and um, with this kind of sponsor thing on it being refugees welcome and um, which is a great message to send out and a hundred percent of profits from the refugees welcome jersey over the next seven days will go towards ending direct provision and that's unbelievable actually do you know what I'm gonna pick it up boom done happy out I strongly recommend all you guys go and do something similar. It doesn't matter who you support. As long as you're a League of Ireland fan, I think it is something to get behind 100%. It's a great gesture from the club. Um, but another thing I heard about Bohemians, which is interesting enough, is that um, you've probably seen a lot of these player interviews and stuff done during the whole pandemic, but you might not have seen any Bohemians players. And there's a theory behind it that I've heard from a couple of different people now that there is a media ban on uh, all the players in the first team squad, which is interesting. Um, Apparently there's rumours that it had come from James Talbot last season. I think he said some stuff that had hit the headlines, whether it was about UCD or Rovers or something. Um, he had said a few bits that, um, I don't know, maybe Keith Long wasn't a fan of. And he apparently, I'm not sure if this is true or not. If anyone has heard anything about this, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear. But apparently there is a media ban on first team members, which is interesting. Another news, UEFA are looking to radically shorten the 2020-2021 European competitions. They could be looking to eliminate sides, which could result in Derry City, the fourth place team, actually missing out on European football next season. Of course, none of this is confirmed, but these are the rumours doing the rounds at the moment. It would also mean one leg uh, qualification matches. So say if Bohemians or Rovers, Dundalk, obviously, will be in the qualification process uh, there'll only be one leg games which I'm not sure could be a positive could be a negative maybe financially it's a negative um, unless they get nice draws at, at home 
um, then they, they could financially benefit from getting further in the competition but I think it probably makes more money for the clubs to have the two legged games and it's just nice for fans to get the chance to go abroad as well so it is, it is a bit of a shame that they are one leg matches but of course to be fair to UEFA they do have to do something to shorten the campaign in other news Waterford FC could be absolutely dust apparently chairman Lee Power has gone into hiding but of course he is also the chairman of League 2 side Swindon Town who a couple of days ago were granted um, promotion and um, the League 1 and League 2 seasons in England actually came to an end and Swindon Town were one of the lucky teams in League 2 to be promoted um, with a lot of games left to play so it's really really good for, for them and whether that has negative or positive consequences for Waterford remains to be seen and um, maybe it could be a negative considering they might have to pump more money into Swindon to keep them up in League 1 next season I know they will of course have more money but I doubt the money that Swindon Town make can be used to help out Waterford I highly doubt that so um, yeah I'm not sure whether it's going to be a positive or negative and Lee Power might be putting all his eggs in one basket with Swindon Town I had said in the channel before that Alan Reynolds the Waterford manager or maybe not anymore um, when he found out about how the players and staff had been told about themselves being furloughed and laid off or whatever he was absolutely raging about that and I had said on the channel that there was rumours he wouldn't come back and those rumours are even more strong now and um, there's rumours that he is being brought into Dundalk's backroom staff and um, of course there is a vacancy there after Rory Higgins did join Stephen Kenny's and um, did join up with Stephen Kenny in the Irish national team setup so there is room for Dundalk to recruit someone there and he would be a fantastic uh, person for Dundalk to replace Rory Higgins with he's a Alan Reynolds is a fantastic manager for the League of Ireland let alone for someone in the coaching team so yeah Dundalk would be would be a lot stronger I feel if they got Alan Reynolds in on board from Dundalk back to Waterford quickly again striker Graeme Cummins has come out and said in an interview something along the lines of how the team isn't training at all and the whole team is in pretty bad shape at the moment so it's not looking good for Waterford at the moment. Striker Michael O'Connor, who was on loan, who I believe captained them in a few games this season, maybe all of them, um, uh, he was on loan from Linfield. He has released a statement online talking about how he has left Waterford FC and has thanked the fans and the players and the staff for all the memories he made with the club. His departure is a big blow for Waterford and it is a big shame because Waterford actually did start the season quite strongly. So yeah, it's a tough worrying time for Waterford fans. Cork City and Finn Harps are two clubs that have been quite vocal about um, them not wanting the season to be resumed behind closed doors. Harps admit that they will face financial and logistical issues when the season resumes, especially if that is behind closed doors, which likely it will be. They have said that they will work with the FAI though and will try and raise the finance needed for a resumption of the league without gate receipts. It's a tough time for all clubs involved, especially Finn Harps who rely so much on the fans' money. It's a fan-owned club, I believe, and they rely so much on that. So yeah, it's it's a really tough time for, for the clubs down the bottom. But as for Cork City, on the other hand, they have said in a statement that they would not step foot onto a pitch until some of their concerns are addressed by the FAI. Chairman Declan Carey has actually come out with a statement instead. He wants to ensure the safety of the players, the staff and supporters, as well as ensuring the financial state of the club is kept healthy so yeah listen that's fair enough I genuinely don't um, think there's a problem there from anyone I think everyone would agree with him that these concerns that he has and uh, they're, they're definitely concerns like big big concerns and they need to be addressed before uh, football is resumed so it, it is a bit of a mess the whole league at the moment um, and obviously the last regime has had a big big part to play in that and they've left us with, in a really dire situation um, and hopefully we can get through it but it's, it's not looking good at the moment. Shelburne are a side who as well as the four European teams have expressed a desire to return to action as soon as possible so yeah um, those five t teams have been vocal in that but listen it's just a really really difficult time and um, yeah if you can if you can afford it if you can just help out with your clubs buy a little bit of bit of merch or a bit of products or whatever a few free jerseys or whatever just helping them out and um, yeah just do what you can to help help your local team it's it's they, they greatly appreciate it at this time it's so tough for everyone and um, so yeah it's it's just hard to know 
what's going to happen in the next few weeks. I might make this kind of LOI news updates thing maybe a weekly or maybe whenever something happens. I might try and do it a bit more regularly because I think it is good to let you not keep you guys up to date with what is going on. And um, yeah, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, I'd appreciate it a lot if you drop a like on it down below. And if you are new around here, I'd really, really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button with notifications on as well. We are closing in on 2,000 subscribers. So that is something we would love to achieve. Um, maybe before the season starts back up, who knows? But yeah, thanks for watching guys, catch us in a bit.